do not hold with men who think of wearing silks and perfumes. I do not care for insolent cowards. I do not care for them. It is time to arms. Welcome back, or welcome for the very first time to Worms and Warriors. We are back here with our Divide et Impera campaign, playing as Bactria. A quick note that this video is chaptered, but we'll have a quick recap now of where we are and what's going on. We are one turn on from where we left off in the previous episode. It is July, 278 BC, summertime. And we're starting off with Leina, increasing in rank. It's one of our noble women. So a quick look at her, actually. Let's have a quick look. Impoverished. So she gets plus four public order to the province. I'm not sure how being impoverished does that, but I guess maybe because she, she has affinity with the working people, the lower classes. Uh, philosophic, cultured, pedantic, and cowardly. Plus three percent to the tax rate, plus one cultural conversion, and plus two public order. So she's really good for upping the public order in our provinces. Even so, we're still on minus one here in our main province of Bactria. Now, the reasons for this, let's have a look. We're getting a little bit from slaves. Cultural differences is hitting us with a minus nine. Uh, provincial instability, minus six. But that improves by minus one every turn. So in six turns, we'll have rid of that. So that should help sorting everything out. Minus seven from taxes. Obviously, nobody likes paying taxes. I especially know this because I've just done my tax return this morning. A bit late, but, you know. Anyway, <laughs> the skills. I like to open up Economist. It means we can uh, increase, we can reduce the cost of agricultural buildings, we can reduce the cost of industri industrial buildings and it boosts income from both. Um, we also get this farming expert which helps with food, which in turn helps with growth and unit replenishment. It all comes in handy. I like to open this one up first and I'm going to put one into agriculturalist. Then the next time we're going to open up the other one, the other tree. So we've got a spy to move. But we're going to have a look at the overall situation here first. So we are Bactria. This is the white section on the map. As you can see, that's all our lands. Uh, if you recall, in the previous episode, we just conquered this southern region of Capucine or Capucini. Whatever it's called, I, I don't know. We've met uh, the faction of Zranka. And we're in on pretty decent terms with these guys. I mean, they don't hate us anyway, which is, you know, what you, what you want. We've got a trade agreement with those dudes. Uh... Now, the main issue we've got is these guys up the top. We do have a trade agreement with them. I think we started with that. But they really don't like us at all. We are unfriendly with these guys. Because we've made friends with Daha and Parthia. I feel that was the better pairing, so to speak. Um, we've also got Hariva right next door to us here. They don't really hate us, but they don't like us either. You know, they're, they're neutral. They don't care either way. We can't trade with them, but I don't I think... You chance of success friend, low. That means it's not going to happen unless we bribe them with a lot of money. They are at war with the Seleucid Empire, Parsa and Lydia, who I believe are both uh, satrapsi, sat satrapsies of Seleucia. So we're going to leave these guys be for now. You might remember we left off with our army on patrol mode down here, but I'm not going to leave these guys here in patrol mode. We're, we're almost back to full strength here with this army. So I'm going to get them out of patrol mode. That's going to hit our public order a bit. Yeah, minus five. It's not great. But I'm going to start moving them back up towards this kind of northern area we've got Procorus up here with his little bodyguard he's our governor for this northern province uh, which is on minus 10 which really sucks um let's have a look into this province so it's cultural differences causing a real big problem here there's only 16 percent hellenistic culture but that is improving fairly rapidly so we're getting 3.2 percent extra per turn which should help put this northern region uh, into a more controlled state, shall we say. Um, but, of course, if anything does kick off up here, we can quickly raise some troops. I mean, well, we're actually saying that, not really. <laughs> uh, fairly quickly, we could raise a small army and put down any immediate threat. We've got some options to upgrade the buildings as well. Um, Maracanda, I'm, I'm tempted to go and build up um, the next level of town here. But it's going to cost us five food and add squalor as well. And we're already in the wrong direction as far as squalor goes. 
Um, this is ready in one turn as well. We can also improve the silk road so we could make a silk trader or silk import. So they both have different merits, of course. Uh, if we did this one, we'd have more trade, more, more textiles to trade, but we make less wealth from commerce. Plus 0.3 second class citizen, plus 0.1% third class citizen um, now if we went for the silk trader we'd make more money locally but only have 10 textiles for trade it's one of those things you have to play off against each other we also get plus one banditry 0.3 percent for second class citizen and 0.1 class for foreign population i think i'm going to go with the silk trader it'll hit our coffers quite hard but that's a worthy investment i would say we'll go for that and actually let's have a look bactria have we got it will cost 3900 to improve bactria in fact i'm going to I don't know. I'm tempted to increase Bactria up to up to the next level rather than Maracanda. Well, let's wait anyway because we'll make a decision next turn because this uh, when when the brick dryer is ready, we get five percent discount on the building. So questions are: Do we go for Har Hariva or up to the north towards Khwarezm? That's the big question. We're friendly with Parthia. We're fairly friendly with Zranka. Now, the Maui are down here in the south. They don't like us at all. So this is going to be an issue. This is a very powerful faction down in the south with good units. Uh, and should we end up fighting these guys, that will certainly be a challenge. Well, chances are we're not going to be doing too much in the way of invading just yet since we are quite weak still. I'm going to have a quick overlook here. And like I say, not every episode is going to be like this. I know the first one was a little bit slow. This one's going to be a little bit slow as well, because we're still, we're still working our way into the game here. So we can have up to four armies in the field, two fleets. We can have one edict, which we've already issued. We can have a champion, which I will recruit in a moment. Spies, we've already got our contingent of one, which is all we can have. Uh, and governors, we've got two out of two already. We are trading with Khwarezm, Zoranka, and Daha. So that's what we've got going on here. In terms of uh, the nobility, let's have a quick look. So the Sogdian nobility bigots. Yeah, this is a bit better. Let's have a look at the, this is a bit better uh, way to look at them. So the Macedonian nobility, these are the other factions in our kingdom. They hate barbarians. Minus two loyalty for each barbarian faction which you have established diplomatic treaties with. Right? Pacifists. Oh. Minus five loyalty per faction you are in a war with. And they are bigots. Minus one loyalty for each province where the player's culture is not dominant. Right, so we are taking a few hits from the Macedonian nobility here. General noble families here. Agriculturalist. Patriots. And they're subversive. Plus one loyalty for each agent action for five turns. All right. And then we've got the Sogdian nobility, which I guess might be, maybe that's the local nobility here. They are bigots, xenophile, and pacifists. What does xenophile give us? Plus two loyalty for each faction with which you have established diplomatic treaties. All right. So these are the guys we've got going on. We can have another two armies. This dude here counts as an army. Now, problem is, it all costs money. We've got three, we've got a lot of income coming in. Um, I'm going to raise a second force, like a second field army, up here at Bukhara. It's going to be a weak army. We've got no real recruiting buildings up here. Uh, our main recruitment base is going to be in Bactria, but this is going to be like a levy army, so to speak. It's going to be a low-value army. Who do we put in charge here? We've got some guys from the Sogdian nobility, Macedonian nobility, more Sogdians. Quite a lot of negative traits on these guys. This is all their starting traits. If you want to have a quick read, you'd have to pause it. I'm not going through all that. Right, I'm going to go with this dude. Uh, plus seven, plus seven public order per turn. Uh, plus one cultural conversion. I mean, he does have some growth penalties and a few military uh, debuffs, but I think all in all, that's he's going to be a pretty decent commander. Um. Looting settlements, minus 25%. Income from raiding, minus 25%. Uh, maybe he's not that great. This guy might be better to have as our uh, as our governor. Let's, let's have a look. I'm going to raise the army anyway. Yeah, we're going to pop him in here as the governor. This guy is going to lead our field army instead. I know I, was, I wanted him as the governor, really, but the other dude sucks. <laughs> uh, what have we got here? 
Idiote. Fortunately, this man was able to take the place of the previous returning officer when he accidentally, brutally cut his own head off whilst combing his hair. Plus two authority, plus two cunning, plus 40 influence per turn for the ruling party. Plus 5% empire management, but actually that 40 influences sound pretty damn good. I'm going to pop him on there. Okay, so Procorus, you're going to come out of this town. You're going to start recruiting us an army. We've also recruited the champion. Let's take a look at the army, what we're going to recruit. I mean, like as you can see, it's just it's levy. So it's going to be a really, really cheap little army, this. I'm going to send out Spine and have a look at Riva, Marv. Let's see what's going on in there. There's no troops in here. Just a garrison. It could be we take advantage of that. These crappy troops, uh, it's, it's going to be really difficult um, to do anything good with them. But, I mean, uh, the, the only good thing is really that everyone else is in the same boat as well. But I'm, I'm tempted to maybe maybe have a go at Riva. I mean, I know we've got a trade agreement with these guys. Oh, no, we haven't got a trade agreement. Ah, but they are defensive allies with Zoranka, so we're gonna, we'd have to keep a real weather eye on that. Certainly, it's not time for that just yet. All right, we've got 500 left in the coffers. Not really much else to do. I'm going to press on, and I'll cut back in when something happens. Okay, so it's the next turn here. Not much has happened, except we've built a couple of new buildings. We've built the Hellenistic village here the, uh, at Eucratidia. Uh, and that has now actually allowed us to recruit some new troops. We've got some camel rider guys here, Sogdian camel riders. Sogdians are renowned traders that brave the long journey along the Silk Road between Bactria and China. They ride hardy Bactrian camels and use bows to fend off bands of steppe nomads that may try to take their treasure. Pretty good unit, actually. Not too bad, anyway. But I'm not going to recruit them just yet. Uh, we can also get Sogdian Archer Spearmen. So these guys, obviously, used to fighting on the steppe, have spears to defend themselves from cavalry. I see what it's got to say. These Sogdians are equipped with recurve bows and short spears to counter mounted enemies on the steps. Yeah, I mean, I must have read this before. <laughs> uh, so you get 165 range with these guys and uh, some decent stats. I mean, they're not great, but I mean, quite handy to have archers with spears, especially in this eastern theatre where there's a lot of... Uh, kind of nomad cavalries around uh, who are going to use bows and arrows and, and run away from you basically or light cavalry who's going to ride down your infantry uh, your your footmen your archers and whatnot skirmishers so those guys are quite handy i would think other than that not a lot happening we have signed a non-aggression pact with zaranka i'm trying to angle it so these guys are more exposed i want i want to try and drive a wedge between zaranka and driver um, or at least become friendly with Saranga, so they will not join the war. I mean, they probably will, but maybe not. That's the plan, anyway. I'm going to recruit a few more throwaway units into this little army up here. We're still on minus three, not ideal. We're down to zero uh, in Bactria. Um, now, I know I said I was going to upgrade one of these villages, but I think I'm not going to do that because we're only on food six, which is not amazing. And if we upgrade one of these, for example, that's going to be minus two. Uh, and a minus five if we did Maracanda, or indeed if we did Bactria itself. So we're going to have to get our food situation under control first. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to recruit a couple of these units, a couple of these guys. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the Camel Archers, I don't think, even though they are decent. In fact, they're quite a lot better than the Bactrian cavalry. And they come from the third class of people, the Loi. Loi, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty good, actually. They do cost a little more, but in everything except for... Morale, I think they're they're better. Uh, melee armor piercing sucks, <laughs> whereas the Bactrians have got okay stats in that. And they're slower as well, but I mean they they, they, they definitely have merit. But I'm not going to recruit them just yet. Look oh, with another couple of units of levies. I'm trying I'm trying to like I'm not one of these kind of players who will just load the armies with the best troops. I try to keep it sort of historical and authentic in that way. I mean I. I as authentic as I know, anyway. <laughs> uh, and anyway, we've got no choice at the moment because we can't recruit the good troops, the Hoplites, for example, uh, the Phalangites, however you say it, the pikemen. Uh, we haven't got access to those guys just yet. I'm going to roll on. So we're a couple of turns on here. Uh, we've just unlocked logistics, which is excellent. They want us to research uh, technology in construction. 
which would unlock public works, minus 15% construction costs, might actually be worth doing. I was thinking about moving on to that kind of tier anyway. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to research this one. It's going to open up um, subterranean aqueduct, stadia, and Odeon. That's going to be handy. Bactria, troubled populace. That's actually getting better. So we're getting plus 16 in here now, which is looking very good, actually. Um, the barracks. Now, this is going to be our... This will be stables, uh, or we can do the infantry barracks. I'm going to go for the infantry barracks. We're going to upgrade that because... I know cavalry is important, but we'll unlock that next, I think, or coming up anyway. Um, for sure. I've sent out our champion to go and have a look up here into the north. And I'm moving our spy north as well. I want to see what's going on up here. It'd be great to be able, if we could expand up here into the north. But as you can see, I mean, this is... For example, this, a Pawnee horse archers. These guys are very tough. Um, difficult to catch. Speed 8. Scythian hired lancers or Scythian hired lancers uh, and Parthian horse archers. So, I mean, these are some of the best mounted troops you can get at this stage of the game. Parthian noble horse archers are even better. Uh, and Persian kinsman cavalry, very, very tough troops. I mean, they're all mounted, of course, which, you know, in theory would give us an advantage if we have a bunch of hoplites and whatnot. But it's difficult to fight these guys, trust us. Uh, but we will come into contact with those dudes sooner or later. And we're going to have to just suck it up and deal with it. Um, but we're going to have a look to see what's going on in the north. I, I don't really know what's happening up there. But we can see these dudes are still at war with Parthia and Daha. So I'm presumably that's giving them some trouble. I've also recruited another governor just to be down here in the south. He's just hanging out in there with his um, Yavana guard. We've got our main army here set to patrol. I'm, te I'm still really tempted to go and get at these guys, but the worry is Zaranka. I mean, they do like us a lot, but I, I just can't. Um, but I, just, I can't see them just letting us attack these dudes. Hang on. Oh, they're now full military allies. Yeah, they're clearly not going to do. They're not going to do that. No chance. <laughs> yeah, even if we give them everything we've got, I know it's not much, but they're still low. So it's, uh, yeah, that could be a problem. We don't know what kind of troops they have down there. However, this guy could maybe not be a governor. We could raise that army up. Now protect our southern flank while we take Marv. I mean, it's inevitable, I think, that we're going to go to war with these guys eventually. But we'll have to plan our attack well. Okay, I'm going to press on. Okay, so we're a couple of turns on here. And we're into what it says autumn, December. I guess maybe because it's not really winter out here. Uh, it's December 278. We're starting to get the public order under control up here in Transoxania. And in Bactria, we're actually in the positives, and we're getting 29 plus per turn. Uh, we're also constructing a timber camp to give us some extra money and some more tradable resources. Uh, the barracks will be ready in about four turns. And I think once the barracks are ready, I'm going to upgrade this army somewhat. Take a few of these guys out, uh, or maybe transfer them to these dudes. I'm bringing this army down. I'm going to stick them in the south, and then the plan is in about four or five maybe six turns we're going to press on marv i want to push this way we're going to have to take risks anyway you get nothing if you risk nothing that's one of those sayings isn't it our spies on the march up to the north still i've brought our champion back down to take a look at marv keep an eye on that going to deploy him in there so what i'm going to do yeah i'm going to move these guys down i'll transfer some of the units from our main army into this reserve army and that's going to go into the south here in case Savranka decide to come and invade us following our invasion of Marv. Arriva territory. So the aim would then be to take Marv and then push south to Atakwana. That would leave Amul under the Daha regime for now. Okay, so we're a few turns on here. It is winter now. It's March 277 BC. Um, we've got the public order pretty much under control up here in the north. Only on minus one, but we're getting plus 12 each turn. We had a little event come up, um, which resolved itself as young pilgrims. There was some guy who'd been cured, and uh, we declared it a miracle, which gave us good omen. Plus four public order, which is obviously great. Uh, so I feel like our economy is getting into shape. We're making good money. We've got decent armies in the field here. 
well, decent armies, <laughs> decent sized armies. Um, the dread of Daimios is almost down here at Capucine, so this is going to guard our southern end. Uh, we're one turn away from the construction research, and um, we are one turn away from the new barracks, and we'll be back when the barracks are done. <laughs> All right, just marvelous. So we've got the research complete. We've got the, obviously we get the uh, bonus from that, which is low construction cost. One of our generals has gone up in rank. One of our heroes has gone up in rank. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here. And of course the barracks are done, which is excellent news. So we're gonna have a quick look at the units that gives that available to us. But first, let's go ahead and work on engineering. Let's go and open up the workshop for us and give us some siege equipment. <laughs> if we've got anywhere to build it, of course. Um, okay, so... I'm just going to quickly upgrade these guys. Ah, so this is, the, this is the guy in the south. The commander. So, in terms of recruitment, what that barracks opens up... Let's have a quick look. I'm going to open it up from our main army. We've got two spaces left in this, but obviously I'm happy to get rid of some of these junk units. Um, let's have a look what that's opened up. So Macedonian settlers, Katoikoi Phalangitai. So these guys are armed with pikes and they're fighting a phalanx. So let's have a quick read. Macedonian settlers are only a small part of Greco-Bactrian society. Their sole purpose is to fight in the ranks of the disciplined pike phalanx. Yep. Uh, Hoplites, Greek. This is Greek colonists. Greeks are the most common Western colonists in Bactria. They are settled in their own city-states and do not share their privileges with natives or even other colonists. Armed as typical hoplites, these soldiers fight in a phalanx. So these are fairly powerful troops, so... And we also get access to Bactrian infantry, which, you know, fairly decent stats. I mean, certainly an improvement over these guys, over the, over the levies. We also get uh, Greco-Bactrian peltasts. Again, these are looking pretty good, actually. Uh, melee armor piercing 7. If we compare that to our usual levies, armor piercing 1. So, garbage. But these guys are the real deal. So, these dudes are pretty good. Uh, Peltas combat is similar to Bactrian philosophy of combat. More like medium infantry than skirmishers, Greco-Bactrian Peltas are solid troops that are perfect for supporting the heavier and slower phalanx. So these guys you can put on the flanks, you can pepper the enemy with javelins, and they can actually move in and fight hand-to-hand -hand as well. I mean, they're not going to be amazing hand-to-hand, -hand, but they have got 10 and 10 uh, melee skill, which, you know, 10 attack, 10 defense, which is pretty good. Uh, pretty good, especially for attacking. The Bactrian infantry. Let's have a quick look at these guys. Bactrioi Doriforoi. Okay. Equipped in the typical Bactrian manner, these troops are fierce infantrymen, although their light armor makes them easier targets. So, yeah, these guys are lightly armed, but look at the bonus versus elephants 21. The Peltasts uh, bonus versus elephants. Where are we at with that? They must have a bonus against elephants, surely. No, they haven't, but usually Peltasts do. Um, but yeah, bonus versus elephants. We're going to be ending up fighting elephants at some point when we press south, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so that kind of thing comes in handy in this region. But first of all, let's get going with this. I'm going to make two lots of the Macedonian settlers. So these pikemen are pretty good troops. They're pretty expensive to keep. They're 200 per turn, and they're going to cost us over 1,000 each to recoup. But money's not a problem at the moment. We've got 14,000 in the bank, so that's two. That's going to take us to the max. But it's not really because I'm going to get rid of these levies. I'm also going to get rid of these Bactrian Javelin men. Let's get rid of those guys. Let's recruit ourselves a unit of Peltasts instead. We're also going to go with an extra unit of Hoplites. And that gives us three spaces left. But obviously we can only recruit so many per turn. We're going to go with the Bactrian Infantry. And then next turn we're going to fill that up. So we're going to have three units of Bactrian infantry, we're going to have four units of phalanx troops which is going to be the centre of our force, the rest is going to go around on the flanks and fight in the typical kind of manner. Uh, okay so I'm going to let that go, I'm going to start moving our spy south, I mean I had intended to go north and some of you guys in the comments uh, on the last video said, said go north but I think maybe it might be better to press out towards the west a little first. So the aim is to take Marv once we get these recruits in. Ah, so now these guys want a trade agreement. I'm not going to accept it. I want to go to war with them. I, I want to. I want their land, basically. Hopefully Zoranka will see sense and not come and fight us. But 
if they do they do that means we're gonna have war on two fronts i mean the game is called total war after all so we do want to see some action all right so we can see this army is starting to shape up it's looking pretty decent actually um these two guys will be recruited in soon enough we can also recruit a couple of new dudes into the dread of Daimos under what does he call again this guy let's take a look Prochorus, of course, Prochorus or Prochorus or whatever he's called, whatever the heck it is. Yeah, so we don't have very much population for the top tier in the southern region, only 706. Um, and so, for example, if we were going to recruit Macedonian settlers, that's going to take 256 of those, so that's a big chunk. And you've got to remember that if these guys fall in combat and stuff, you've got to replenish them. They don't just uh, respawn, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to recruit two units of Hoppetes for this force. Oh, so actually the Bactrian infantry come from that top tier as well. Katakoi. Katoi Koi. As do the Peltasts. Okay. I should probably pay closer attention to that. Are the Katakoi actually, the, are they the medium? Yeah, they are. Right, so these guys are like the the medium population. So in this whole province, we've got 6,000 of those guys. But in this southern area... Not so many. All right, so this is some pretty good timing, actually. The Maurya have declared war on Zvranka, so they might think twice about opening up a second front to their north. So, uh, if we remember, let's have a look at the diplomacy overview. The Maurya are down here in the south, so they've come into conflict with Zvranka, which suits us just fine. Uh, if we go into Hariva, hopefully Zvranka... I mean, even if they declare war, they may not send troops to, the, to into our territory... Uh, you know, so it's going to... I think that's playing into our hands quite nicely. We're still on good terms with them. Um, so let's get on with this war against Horiva. I'm happy to take the war to them. Recruiting a couple of units of Hoplites into there, into this southern army. Um, what else can we add? Let's go with some Macedonian settlers. It's going to be three of them. So the southern army is fairly weak, but it's not too bad. These guys are going to recruit in, and we'll be moving off next turn. So we can see all this recruiting is obviously hitting our our turnly uh, profits, but that's to be expected. Now, we can't quite get there this turn, so we're going to just move them in. It's going to give us a penalty for being in their lands, but that's just fine. Advanced. We're in spring. It's June. So we're going to be fighting in July. It's going to be a good time, I would thought. I Let's see how we get on in this next turn. I've just dropped a quick save in just in case anything breaks or anything. You never know when you're playing these mods. It's always best to have uh, a backup. Something I've learned the hard way more than once. Uh, okay, so... It's going to be interesting. I'm going to have one last quick look at the political situation. Zoranka still like us. I mean, they've lost a little bit of uh, friendliness because of our trasp trespassing against Horiva. But, you know, I'm not bothered. Uh, Horiva, it's... I don't know where their armies are, but... I'm sure they've got one somewhere. Let's find out. <laughs> We're going to fight this garrison army. Hopefully they'll sally out and fight us in the field. Otherwise we'll have to be attacking the town again, like last time. But that's okay. We cannot follow this order. Declare war. Ooh, so they've got quite a lot of allies. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. And they've all joined them. Oh my gosh. We will all right. Like dogs. Yeah, I mean, look at the strength... Uh, I would normally auto-resolve this fight, but let's let's fight it on the battlefield. We haven't had a fight for a while. What have they got here? Persian archers, Persian townsfolk, militia, and Persian spearmen. I mean, these Persian spearmen are actually pretty good. Um, the rest, you know, just standard sort of militia troops. Let's get on to the slaughtering. The enemy sallies out to fight you in the field. Okay, so it's a field battle. Excellent. That suits us much better. Phew, so I was just interrupted by work stuff, uh, and I've lost the thread a little bit. But we're here. We're on the battlefield. We are ready to attack. It's dry, which suits us just fine. The ground looks pretty grim. Uh, some hills in there, but let's get started with deployment. Quite flat, actually, so that looks pretty good. What I want to do, I want to try and goad these guys into attacking us, especially our phalanx troops. I'm just going to set these dudes up. Okay, so we've gone for quite a wide deployment. We've got our phalanx troops in the center. On the right flank, 
we've got our back three and infantry who have also got this defensive formation uh, button, which is pretty cool. So if we press that, it increases the defense, but it lowers the attack. But it might come in handy. Um, on the left, we've got these axe men who are going to hopefully envelop and smash the enemy. Then we've got the spear archers out on the flank. Our back green archers in the center. Uh, and our horse cavalry. Horse cavalry? Horse archers on the left. Uh, the javelin horsemen on the right. So let's get started with this. I do not hold with men who think of wearing silks and perfumes. I do not care for insolent cowards. I do not care for them. It is time to arms. They've got their Persian archers dotted around the front, as expected. But I will see if I can go them and coming forward. Let's send our cavalry up. Archers! Riders on me! To war, man. To war. We're waiting for the cavalry to get in place. That's fine. We'll have a quick look at these guys. It's our Greek colonists. Some awesome looking shields here. Uh, the Dividated and Paramod people ready, do sir. a hell of a job. Ah, and then here we are. Look. Fight. The Macedonian ready. settlers. They look awesome. They look really cool. Look at the size of those spears. Pikes. <laughs> I don't know. How, how tall are they? Great. Probably three times as long as a man maybe four times but you have to remember that some men are longer than others long spears twice as long as a man not long right. some men are longer than others your mother been telling you stories about me again eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. ready. back to your infantry at your command bit eastern flavor into these guys nice big shields decent quilted armor it looks like uh, we can see some of these uh, like more greek looking gear amongst these guys pretty awesome actually they look pretty cool i'm looking forward to seeing them in combat i'm gonna swing our cavalry up and see if we can pepper these guys on the on their flank We're moving slowly, um, keeping our cohesion and keeping our troops fresh. There's some Persian townsfolk on the right on the edge of their line. I know they're just expendable troops, but hopefully if we can hit some, hit them, cause some casualties, we'll maybe goad them into attacking us. Maybe not. I mean, if not, we'll obviously go and attack them. Okay, we're going to speed it up a little bit. We're going to move in. Moving in at speed. Yeah, they're repositioning. They're doing something anyway. Let's get these boys in here. Let's see if we can pepper them. Who we've got on the flanks. Persian militia. We could probably also do damage to those guys. Yeah, we have goaded them into some kind of action. Let's see what they've got for us. They're going to move forward, I hope. Plenty of room to manoeuvre for our cavalry as well. Why are we not firing? <laughs> These peasants won't be liking that. Oh, we are going to take some counter fire as well. It's not Riders ideal. At the Riders advance. Caused some decent casualties amongst those uh, townsfolk. Fire! 
I'm content just to let them come and we've, we've messed up their formation a little bit. We haven't lost anybody yet either. And actually, the way this is working out, we could maybe slam into those guys. I know the the Bactrian and horse artillery. Uh, horse artillery. What am I talking about? The Bactrian and horse cavalry. The, the horse archers aren't exactly built for combat, but we should be able to swat these Persian archers away. Our mainline archers are starting to open fire. Archers. See if we can hit their archers and take them out. Yep, nice. So we've gotten rid of their archers in the rear. And they're ready. Strategos. So we've taken care of those guys, let's bring them, our horse archers back here and hit their archers. Oh no, I didn't pay attention enough. Let's get our archers out of there if we can, if not we've lost these guys. <laughs> okay, so these Sogdians are going to charge out here. These are attack kind of troops. Wrong button. Orders Orders. Orders. The battle is turning in our favor. Nice. Let's get these archers in there. Orders, my lord. Spearmen. Get in game. Archers, ready. Quickly now. Sogdians are making quick work of this Persian militia, absolutely hammering them. And now our horse archers have arrived in the rear and are smashing this other unit. Some Persian spearmen there, they are pretty damn good. Armour is crazy, 47. Uh, 28. <laughs> uh, let's get these Persian militia, we'll hit them in the rear as well. No, not those guys. It's a good night, I would say. Yeah, things are not going well for them. Peltas blasting over there, over there with their uh, javelins, just smashing into the enemy. Okay, let's finish this. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Orders, my lord. Riders, at the double. The Sogdians are even making quick work of these Persian uh, spearmen. I thought they might give them a little bit of trouble, but it turns out they didn't. I think we're going to be taking a little bit of friendly fire here, no doubt, but that's all right. These Sogdians are pretty badass. Our general is under attack. We await your command. Charge. 
I'm gonna send our cavalry to ride everyone down. Forward! What are your orders? Post skirmishes! Very enjoyable battle that, just a, just a slaughter really, but it was good fun. Well, it is not going to be a good day for little spearmen running away. Units has used all its ammunition. Very nice, very nice. That was a good battle. Enjoyed it. I mean, it was really easy. We will come across harder enemies than this, trust me. 107 losses. They only inflicted 89, so there was a bit of friendly fire there. I thought there would be, but you know, it's one of them things. Um, Bactrian horse archers done really well again. There are lots of kills for those dudes. Barely lost a man, really, to be honest. I mean, a handful of uh, the Bactrian cavalry. But on the whole, that was a slaughter. But we have now got three sets of enemies, which uh, that is going to be a problem. <laughs> That's going to be a problem that we are going to have to address in the next episode, I feel. Um... Excellent. I'm going to loot the place. It's going to fill up our coffers. We'll set these to repair for now, and then we'll change over the bits and bobs. My sword is yours. Minus 65. I mean, obviously, it's because we looted the place. Um, 723. How is that all we're making? We're making less money now with an extra province. Uh, well, anyway. Um, yeah. So, Hariva, enemies. Zoranka, enemies, of course. Parthia. Oh, they don't like us anymore either. <laughs> this could have been a mistake. I mean, it's definitely possible that this was a mistake. Welcome, friend. Let us conclude. But I'm going to try. Actually, I'm going to send. I'm going to send a delegation out. I'm going to send my wife out. I'm going to send an emissary. Uh, oh no, no, that's not the right one. Yeah, we're going to send it. We're going to send a diplomatic mission, and we're going to send them to Parthia. See if we can maybe improve this a little bit. This is a uh, random generated, I think, the outcome of this result of, of this visit, but we'll have it in a turn or two. So send her off. She's going to speak to the Parthians on our behalf. What do you wish of me? Let's send our spy south. See if anything opens itself up. Persian Kinsman Cavalry. I mean, these guys look the business. 47 armor on them as well. Um, archers or javelin men of some sort. Anyway, they've got a range of 90. Um, good damage on them. Very tough opponents they will be. Our southern army is fairly weak, but it's okay. Uh, I'm going to put these guys into patrol to bump up our money a little bit. Oh, we're making 1,500 now. I don't really know how that happened, but anyway... Um, so Zranka, we are also at war with. We've got to keep an eye on what's going on here. It could be, it could be absolutely possible that these two governor armies or governor gen units will need to be converted into actual field armies, depending on how these wars go. Uh, but as we can see, troop-wise, I mean, we're looking okay actually in here, looking just fine actually. I'm going to pop the, uh, I'm going to pop our hero in there to do some military training and see if we can improve some of these uh, unit ranks. Ah, we've got up a little bit. Let's go for Stratagos Spears. Increased missile attack range for all units. I think that sounds pretty good. Let's go with that one. I'm going to go for Polis Defenders as well. We'll work on more as it goes, obviously. Okay. We're going to have to get this under control, and we're going to have to get the... Uh, we're going to have to get the culture under control. But there's a lot of work to do. A lot of things going on. We are actually at 100 in Bactria. So let's see what happens next. Let's see where this goes. Let's see who turns against us. Uh, we've got war going on on all fronts. I enjoyed that little battle there. It was good fun. Um, the Parthia right next door. They are going to be a problem, I suspect. If not yet, then soon. Um, obviously, Hariva. They're not going to be overly happy. But 
the one good thing is that the Maoria have gone to war with these dudes, the Zaranka. So that's handy. Do they like us anymore? Yeah, they do. They don't. They don't hate us anymore. I will do you the honor of listening to you. Nah, they still don't want anything to do with oh. us. So. All right, that's fair enough. Anything else to do before we crack on with this? No, nothing much really. Nothing much going on. Okay, so we've taken Marv. We've expanded our realm a little bit. We've had a cool little battle there. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. Uh, if you've missed the first episode, go back and check that out. I'll put a pinned comment up uh, so you can go back and watch it. Uh, there'll be a pinned comment to the series playlist, so go and check that out. Whatever you do, and I hope you're having a great day. I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Remember, episodes every Monday. Turn off for now.